So we're out here today to preach the word of the Lord. Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel into every creature. So that's what we're here to do today as followers of Jesus Christ, people that love and fear God, people that, that want to do what's pleasing unto the Lord. We'll follow His Word and, and preach His Word that others may be saved. See, Jesus likened the Word of God unto seed that a sower would sow. That you can take the Word of God and cast it, on, cast it onto the hearts of mankind. And if it lands on good ground, it'll bring forth fruit. But there are, there are some stony hearts out there, stony ground where the seed, the Word of God, won't bring forth any fruit. So there's some thorny ground. Some, that, some of the word will be, will be plucked away. But praise God, His word is available to everybody. Everybody can hear the word of the Lord. And one of the major problems in America today is people don't know what life is for. What's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of life? Some people don't even know when it's been written in English for over 400 years. The purpose of life, it says it right here. The, the wisest man by the testimony of Scripture, the wisest man that's ever been on the face of the earth, he, he said this. At the, at the end of 12 chapters of his testimony, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. There you go. That's your purpose. Fear God and keep His commandments. Are you doing it? Most people aren't. Most people don't fear God and keep His commandments. You, you know how you can tell? Because we have so much crime, we have so much divorce, we have so much, so many people destroying their lives through the lust of their flesh. They're not fearing God and keeping His commandments. But nonetheless, that's why you're here. Fear God, keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, whether it, and with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See, all, all your secrets, the things you think are secret, You've never told anybody. Nobody saw you do it. It's not recorded on any device. It's recorded in heaven. Everything you've ever done, it's recorded in heaven. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now that's bad news. That's bad news because the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Whether it was an outward sin that everybody could see or whether it was an in inward sin like the pride of your heart. Whether it was the, the lust of your flesh. Maybe you didn't act on the lust of your flesh, but, you know, the, the lustful things, you, you thought they were good ideas. Jesus said, if you even look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery in your heart already. It's not, it's not, about it. it's not only about what you do, you're going to be judged on what you think is a good idea. And again, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everybody is in big trouble with God. But praise God, He has made a way. Praise God, He's made a way that all your sins could be remitted. Your sin could be forgiven. Your sin could be cast away. And that's through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. So you could be made free from sin. You could be made free from the wages of your sin. If you were to be born again through Jesus Christ and made a new creature. Hallelujah. That's the good news out here today. See, the good news is that you can be born again through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. That's grief and godly sorrow for all your wrongdoing. And you put your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God would save your soul. And that's the only way you're going to be saved. Nobody goes to heaven by going to church. No one gets their sins forgiven by doing good works. You're not going to stand before God on Judgment Day and tell God all the wonderful works that you did, how you fed the poor, how you healed the sick, or anything else that you did good in your life, because God's not going to want to hear it if you, if you stand before Him in your sin. Don't stand before God in your sin. You need to stand before God in Christ. And the only way to be in Christ is to be born again, made a new creature, made a new creature in Christ, as the Bible says. That is the hope of all mankind. That's the simple hope. That's the exclusive hope. That, that is the hope we are presenting today. And the only people that are going to be saved are those that humble their heart toward God. The Bible says right here, 
for all those things hath mine hand made. See, God created everything. God's hand created the earth, created the planets, created the universe, and created you. Created your body, created your soul. You were created by God. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. You need God to look to you. To this man I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit that trembleth at my word. You need to tremble at the word of God, the law of God. You need to live in fear of the Lord. See, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear the Lord, you ain't got no wisdom. If you don't fear God, you're a fool. Those people that don't fear God, they're prideful. And that's the problem with America today. People are full of pride. They're proud of themselves. They're proud of their nation. They're proud of their appearance, which is fading. They're proud of things that don't last. You need to be humble toward God. You need to be, to be grateful toward the Lord for the good things you have. See, the Bible says right here, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. See, if you think Donald Trump or Joe Biden is going to save your soul, or going to save your country, or save your life, you li you're living under a curse. If you think the men of this world are going to are going to save you, they're going to. If you think men of this world are going to be your strength, you're living under a curse because they're going to fail you. I mean, everybody knows that all the people of the world are all going to die one day. I don't mean to be a spoiler, but the people of this world, they. They're living under a curse when they put their faith in a man. What you need to put your faith in is the man Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who conquered sin and death and hell. Who was crucified on the cross. He was dead and buried for three days. And then he conquered this, the grave. He conquered sin and death and hell. And, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He's the one that you need to put your faith in. Jesus Christ. He is your creator. He is your sustainer. And he will be your judge. Probably before you know it. Probably before you, you expect it. Jesus Christ is going to judge your life. And if you haven't been born again, if you're living in your pride, if you're living in your sin, if you've never been born again, you're going to, be, you're going to get the wages for your sin, which is death. That's eternal death for your sin. And God doesn't want that for you. That's why he sent his followers into all the world to preach the gospel. That at least you could hear the way of salvation. At least you could hear the good news. Unfortunately, most people will reject the good news of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, most people are, are going to reject the freedom, the freedom to live a, a life pleasing to God after they've been born again, made a new creature in Christ. The Bible talks about both Jew and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. There's nobody that's born into righteousness. It doesn't matter what people group you're a part of. Jews and Gentiles, they're all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. If you haven't been born again, if you're still living in your sin, you are unprofitable to God. You're not doing anything good for the kingdom. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Just because you think you're a good person doesn't mean you're a good person in the sight of God. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Unfortunately, there are people around whose mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. And Jesus told us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if someone's mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, guess what? That's what their heart is full of, cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And we have that in America, don't we? Destruction and misery are in their ways. Not long ago, in this, on this very property right here, in this public property, we had people celebrating sin, celebrating homosexuality. And that's destruction and bitterness. Their feet are sh quick to sh shed blood right here. And that's what they get for their sinful lifestyle. See, sin leads to death. Eating too much food, gluttony, leads to death. That's why we have so much sickness in America today. People can't stop eating. 
Anything that crosses their eye, they gotta eat it. And you can see those people getting fatter and fatter and fatter. Just like the people that can't walk past the, the, the beer aisle in the store or the bar, they get drunker and drunker and drunker. You, you got the drug addicts. They keep smoking and smoking and smoking, destroying their lives, destroying their families, destroying their eternity. And those, those wick, wicked, prideful people, they're gonna get the wages of their sin, which is death. You're gonna get paid. Unfortunately, some of them have children. You're gonna pay for all of eternity for your sin. You've earned it, God's gonna pay you. What you need to desire is the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. There's nothing, nothing more miserable than, than a, than a hell-bound sinner. In the way of peace have they not known. So many people in America, they have no peace. They, they live in fear. They live in torment. They live by the lust of their flesh. Oh, they may sober up sometime during the morning, but then what do they do? They have to drink more alcohol. They have to smoke, smoke more cigarettes. They have to do more drugs. They have to have more, more perverted sexual relations. They have no peace. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's a big, big problem in America today. Hardly anybody has the fear of God before their eyes, because if you feared God, you'd obey God. If you feared God, you'd read His Word. If you feared God, you'd hide His Word in your heart. But most people, they have no stomach for the Word of God. All they really want is some, something, to, uh, something to soothe their, their shame. So many people in America today, they just live in constant shame because they sin and they sin and they sin and they know they're guiltier and guiltier and guiltier and their shame builds and builds and builds and they think they can assuage their guilt and shame through drunkenness, through pride, through entertainment. That's what many Americans do. If they didn't have their entertainment, if they didn't have their tons and tons of food to, satis to, to satisfy the lust of their flesh, which is never, never satisfied, if they didn't have all the things of this world, they would, be, they would even be more miserable because of their sin. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. And praise God we have his law because people need to know the knowledge of their sin. People have sinned against God. How do we know? Because the Bible tells us so. Whether it's the Ten Commandments or many, the other many uh, passages of Scripture that tells us about your sin, the law of God is perfect in converting the soul. Because when you realize how much, how, how deep, how deep is your, your, your depravity before God, your desire for sin, your disregard for righteousness should bring on, on you the fear of the Lord. See, if you fear God and keep His commandments, again, that's the whole duty of man. That's your purpose in this life, to fear God and keep His commandments. See, the problem in America, you got too many people that call themselves Christians, but they've never been born again. you got too many churchgoers, but they're not actually of the church. They're not actually of the body of Christ. They think that because they go into a certain building on Sunday or Wednesday or who knows how often they go, people think that just because they they go to a church building once in a while, oh, maybe I'll get into heaven. You know, maybe God will be so happy with me because I'm nice to people and because I go to a church building and, hey, I drop some cash in that plate they send around. They think they just might go to heaven. We're here to tell you folks it's not so. You don't get to heaven by going to a church building. You don't get to heaven by giving money away. You don't get to heaven by doing good works. You must be born again. You must be made a new creature in Christ. And the only way that's going to happen is through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance towards God. That's the only way your sins are going to be remitted. That's the only way your sin, you're going to have your sins cast as far as the east is from the west. Because if you think your religious activity is going to save your soul, you're mistaken. Whether you're a, a, a churchianity person somebody who likes to go to church, or whether you're a Catholic, or a Muslim, or an atheist, or a Hindu, or, or what have you, 
none of those things are going to help you. See, the devil has a smorgasbord. He's got a lot of roads that lead to hell. Now they're essentially the same road, but maybe maybe they're different lanes. The, the, the devil's got a million different lanes to hell. You can, you can pick your flavor, pick your type, as long as you don't pick the truth. As long as you don't put your faith in Jesus Christ and be born again, Satan will be satisfied. We're out here to tell you the truth, that there's only one way to be saved, that there's only one way to be born again, and that's through Jesus Christ. Praise God. See, if you trust in Jesus Christ, then, then you will know what the truth is. You won't trust in your heart anymore. See, the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. The Bible says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be, de be delivered. See, if you follow your own heart, the Bible says you're a fool. Now, may maybe some people have heard somebody say, Oh, follow your heart. Do what makes you feel good. And the Bible says you're a fool. That's the word of God. Don't follow your heart, because the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Don't follow something that's deceitful and desperately wicked. You need to follow Jesus Christ. You need to follow the Lord. And the only way you're going to follow Him is through faith in Him and repentance towards God. That's grief and godly sorrow for all the sin and wickedness and depravity in your own life. Acknowledging to God just how bad of a person you are. You're not a good person just because you do uh, less drugs than somebody else or because you're faithful to somebody. You're not Just because you're nice to everybody, that doesn't make you right with God. Again, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means you've sinned against God and you can't make up for it. You can't make up for your sin by doing good things or going to a church building or giving away lots of money or volunteering lots of times. That doesn't save anybody. Now that deceives a lot of people. Many, many people are deceived they think they're going to get into heaven, but that's their pride. You think you can be good enough to make up for the wickedness that you've done. And that, that wouldn't even work in a, in a courtroom here on earth. It's certainly not going to work in God's courtroom. You can't go to an earthly judge and say, well, you know, I did this, these bad things, but I did a lot of good things too. Hey, what is that? Encouragement for you there. What is it? Uh, give all your worries to the Lord and he'll take care of you on the other side. Oh, yeah, that, that's false right there. That's not the Word of God. Oh, it's not the... Yeah. What is that? 1 Peter 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, 7. Let's take a look. Cast your cares on him. 1 Peter 5, 7. Let's take a look. Or cast your anxiety on him. Or he cares for you. Let's check it out. Because the... Yeah. Because the Word of, of God is pure. Now, if it matches this, it's good. Let's see yeah, if we can find 1 exactly Peter. That. Yeah, let's see here. First Peter, yeah, First Peter 5, 7. Sorry, it's taking me so long. Here we go. First Peter 5, 7. First Peter 5, 7. It says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Yep, that's exactly. No, it says, Cast all your care upon him. That says, Give all your worries and cares to God. Yeah, well, we're just trying for to encourage you. For he careth, he careth for you. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to encourage you there. Well, I, I appreciate it, but the King James Bible, the, 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 the King James Bible is the holy, perfectly preserved words of God. Well, the Spirit wrote this. The Spirit wrote this. So you go by what the Spirit wrote. Right. But then it's been corrupted. It's been corrupted by wherever you got that from. So you need the perfectly preserved words of God. In the truth, encourage one another in the truth. But if I appreciate that, but if you but if you have a corrupt Bible, you may, you may read that Jesus is a liar. Do you know that's in a lot of those modern Bible translations? And also, it takes the blood of Christ out of First Corinthians, First Colossians, or Colossians one fourteen. So it's a problem, right? But if you're reading out of out of a so-called Bible version that has taken those things out. Then, then what you're reading is corrupted. You have to have the perfectly preserved words of God in the King James Bible. It's even more deceptive because it's more subtle. Yeah. I mean, if you let's say if you had a fake dollar, you know, a fake hundred dollar bill, and it had 
Benjamin Franklin with the sunglasses on it. That would be goofy. No one would be deceived by that. But if it was very subtle, a very subtle counterfeit, then you may actually take that from somebody, and then you're out $100 because it's a fake bill. Yeah, I, you know, I know there's a lot of translations. Well, and the, the devil has been trying to corrupt the Word of God from the beginning. Now, God, God has preserved it in the King James Bible. That, that's where you're going to find true doctrine. But the other ones are watered down and changed, and you're going to have a watered down faith if you don't, if you can't put your faith in this, you know, because because if, if you pick up a Bible and you think, well, maybe some of it's wrong, maybe it's got problems, then there's no faith in that, right? But it, but if you can pick up this, the King James Bible, and say, I don't care what I believe, I don't care what the world says, this is true, and anything con anything contrary to this is, is wrong, even if it's your own beliefs. Okay, so the King James Bible is the truth. And that one's based on the King James Bible. So again, we're out here to preach the holy and perfectly preserved words of God to our neighbors. That, that's how you love your neighbor, is by giving them the truth. See, if you love somebody, you certainly wouldn't lie to them. That's why you give them the truth. Praise God. And that we can have the truth of the word of the Lord today. Hallelujah. See, if you trust in the Lord, then you can cast all your cares upon Him. See, if you have your faith in Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, then, that, then that's where your faith will be. So when the wicked things of this world, you see them taking place before your eyes, well, you don't have to be shaken. You don't have to freak out. You can have hope in Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord, we have hope today. See, and those that have their hope in Jesus Christ, they, they don't have to spend their, their life trying to amass their own pleasure. If your hope is in Jesus Christ and you've been born again, you don't have to spend your life trying to get, the, get enough wealth so, to make sure you're okay. And you need to work hard. You need to, you need to labor and, and enjoy the fruits, the fruits of your labor. But you can be charitable. See, if you're, if you're not distracted by the things of the world, the entertainment of the world, if you're, not, if you're not trying to amass your worldly wealth, you can be charitable. See, the Bible says right here, charity suffereth long and is, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeking not her own. Is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. See, that's what we need, is more charity in our society today. But unfortunately, we have, we have selfish people. See, it's selfish people that have pe sex with people they're not married to. They just want to satisfy their own lust. It's selfish people that want to get drunk. Now, you know you can't help your neighbor, you can't love your neighbor, you can't do good to your wife and your children when you're drunk, but there's people that do it anyway. You know, it's not charitable to smoke tobacco and do all those wicked things. You're destroying your life and you're, you're, you're breathing your tar and nicotine and carcinogens on, on your neighbors. That's not loving. That's pure selfishness. See, if you were born again of the Holy Spirit, made a new creature in Christ, the Bible promises that you could be free from sin. Hallelujah. And that's what we're out here to preach today, that you could be free from sin. You could be made, you could be made a new creature in Christ. That's what we want for our neighbors, freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But those that are in bondage, 
Those that are in bondage to their sin, they live selfish and destructive lifestyles. They, they live lives that are not good for themselves and not good for their neighbors. They're not loving toward God and they're not loving toward their neighbors. That's the problem with America today. People are full of sin, full of gluttony, full of drugs, full, full of alcohol, and full of sexual perversity. Those are things that don't bring forth fruit, they don't bring forth love, and they don't bring forth the kingdom of God. The only thing that brings forth the kingdom of God is the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, separating the bone and the marrow. Praise the Lord. The Word of God is where hope is. The Word of God is where faith is. If you want your faith built up, if you're a Christian today and you want your faith built up, it's built up by the, by the reading of the Word. Praise God. That's how simple it is. People are always wanting more faith these days, especially in the church buildings. They talk about having more faith, more faith, and more faith. All you got to do is read the Word of God, thus saith the Lord. It's very simple. Of course, then you got to question the people that say they want more faith and they refuse to read the Word of God. It seems kind of, a, kind of a contradictory there. But those that are of a humble heart and those that be of a contrite spirit, those are the ones who God saves. Hallelujah. The Bible says right here in James chapter 4, it says, Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. See, the spirit of this world, the spirit of your flesh, lusteth to envy. Envy, But God gives us more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So if you're a prideful person today, if you've got pride in your heart, if you've got pride, pride in your life, God is resisting you. But if you are humble, then God, then God is giving you grace, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, flee from you. See, if you were to actually resist the devil, if you were born again, the devil would flee, he'd leave you alone. Not that he'd be gone forever, but praise God, he's got, he gives you that power through Jesus Christ that you can resist the devil. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Again, that's what you need to do. You need to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Then God will lift you up. If you lift yourself up, you're going to be cast down on judgment day. You can be lift up in your own pride, your own foolish, selfish, worthless pride. God hates your pride. Humble yourself toward God, and He will lift you up. And that is someone that will that is a lifting up that'll that'll never be overcome. If God lifts you up, if you, if you're born again, if you are part of His body, part of His kingdom, you will never be cast down. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, but at least that guy and his wife seem to be willing to listen. Yeah, yeah. That's always surprising. It's like one in 10,000 people we go, somebody's <laughs> like, they actually engage. Yeah, you never know. It may, may you know, more than, more than go forward. Yeah. Yeah.